Well, how about you? I want to give you my bottom line test. It's a test that I give all over the world, wherever I go and speak. It's a very simple test. You're going to take this at home by yourself, watching this on the computer, or if you're watching this in a Sunday school, you can do it as a Sunday school. The test is very simple. It deals in the area of Scripture memory. I say the beginning of a verse. I want you to fill in the rest of the verse. Now, depending upon how you fill in the rest of the verse will help me determine whether or not you focus more on the top line of the covenant over the bottom line of the covenant. Now, before your palms get all sweaty and you say, gee, I wish I'd taken a memory course, you know, don't worry about it. If you know it, just say it out loud or quietly to yourself. Maybe, ev maybe you know it. Maybe everybody listening knows it. Maybe nobody knows it. I don't know. Here it goes. Here is the test. Fill in the rest of this verse. Be still and... You're probably saying to yourself, know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Come into my presence, know me, worship me, refers to which part of the covenant? That's right. The first part, the top line of the covenant. But if you didn't realize it, you just quoted me Psalm 46, verse 10, A. The first third of the verse. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. The rest of Psalm 46, verse 10. You know, it could be that you, just like me, when I became a Christian my first year at Penn State University, went down to the Christian bookstore, and I got my Bible. And because I bought my Bible, because I was a freshman in college, had just graduated from high school, I forgot to differentiate between my Bible and my yearbook. What's a yearbook, you say? If you're not from the United States, maybe you don't know what a yearbook is. But a yearbook is a book that you get from all of your senior year, from your, when you're a senior in high school. It's got pictures of every student that was there, and uh, the tennis team, the basketball team, the football team, all the dances and the events, and, and they put it together in one book, and you call that a yearbook. And I forgot to differentiate between my Bible and my yearbook. Why? Because when I got my yearbook, the very first thing I did, I opened it up, and I began to look for me. Oh, there I was on the tennis team. There I was on the basketball team. Oh, there's my senior picture. Oh, there I was at that event. And I went through, and I looked for me. That's how I read my Bible. I got my Bible out, and I began to ask one very simple question. Where am I in this? What's God got in this for me? For God so loved Bob Shogren that he gave his only begotten son that if I should believe in him, I should not perish, but I should have everlasting life. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I love this Christianity. And without realizing it, oh, I should have paid half price for my Bible. Why? I was only reading half of God's Word. I was only focused on half of God's Word, the top line, the first half. And I'd go to Psalm 46, verse 10. I'd highlight the top line. I'd memorize the top line. I'd go looking for my next top line verse, having no idea I was passing up. Bottom line after bottom line after bottom line. And I got caught up in yearbook theology or picture theology. Imagine a picture of you and your family on a family reunion. What's the first person you look for? It's you. A picture theology, either picture theology, we call it overseas, or yearbook theology, we call it here in the States. I got caught up in a yearbook theology, and I am firmly convinced most Christians only read half of their Bible. They only read half of God's Word. It has nothing to do with top line or the Old Testament versus the New Testament. No. The New Testament is only one-third. The Old Testament is two-thirds in size. It has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with top line versus bottom line. And many Christians are only reading top line passages. Let me give you an example. When I was a child growing up in Sunday school, I went to church, and I heard about Daniel in the lion's den. I heard it again and again and again. I remember my son, as he went to Sunday school, said, Dad, how many times are they going to teach about this? Well, what lesson do we learn in Sunday school about Daniel in the lion's den? Well, the lesson's very simple. Trust in God, and He'll take care of you. It's true. It's real. It's top line. 
absolutely nothing wrong with that lesson. It's not incorrect, but it is incomplete. What's the bottom line to Daniel and the lion's den? I had no idea. In fact, I really didn't care. <laughs> Why? I found out about me in the Bible, and I wasn't worried about anybody else. But that's only half the story. As the story goes, uh, you know the story. The king finds out who the bad guys are, pulls Daniel out, throws the bad guys in, and then the king does this. Daniel chapter 6, verses 25 and 26. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land. May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. What's happening here? You've got a Gentile king who is so impressed with the God of the Israelites through Daniel. He goes back to his desk. He writes a memo. He faxes it to all the kings on the face of the earth, and he says, worship the God of Daniel. You've got a Gentile king evangelizing a Gentile world. Bottom line lesson, internationals are going to be so impressed with how God takes care of you that they're going to go tell other internationals about your God. Bottom line application, how do you apply that to your life? Get involved with internationals living around you and let them see your life. God wants you involved with internationals in your community. It might be down at the local college. It might be at the workplace. It might be in the school. But God wants you loving them. God wants you befriending them. God wants you rubbing shoulders with them, having them over for dinner so they can see your life and be impressed with your God. The bottom line to Daniel and the lion's den. But I was never taught that lesson in Sunday school. Why? I was taught a yearbook theology, a picture theology. I was taught a theology that focused on me, and I miss so much. Now listen, <laughs> I give these talks all the time. And when I'm there, I ask my audience this question. That could be a, it could be a crowd of, of 2,000. I say, how many of you, if, if at any point in your life, you were taught the bottom line to Daniel and the lion's den, would you please stand up at this point in time? Out of a crowd of 2,000, you can probably count them on one hand. Why? Because most Christians are only learning half of their Bible. That's why we call the talk the missing half. They're missing half of God's Word, half of what God is trying to teach them. Let's keep going. The Ten Plagues. What lesson do we learn in Sunday school from the Ten Plagues? Well, you all know the lesson. God wants to redeem you. God wants to pull you out of bondage. It's true. It's real. It's top line. It's not incorrect, but it is incomplete. What's the bottom line to the Ten Plagues? I had no idea. And I didn't care. I was only worried about me and the Bible. But it was so wrong. Why? What was going on? Well, every plague that God brought about dealt with the gods of the Egyptians. Egyptians saw gods after gods after gods get knocked down. They began to wonder, hello, are we worshiping the right gods here? When the Exodus took place, you then read these words in Exodus chapter 12, verse 37. The Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Succoth. There were about 600,000 men on foot besides women and children. Many other people went up with them. See those key words? Many other people went up with them. Who were those other people? They were the Egyptians. That's right. Now, these Egyptians, let's think through this. They left their homes. They left their family, their extended family. They left their friends, they left their jobs, they left all of their security, they left everything behind them to follow the God of the Israelites. Let me ask you this very simple question. Are we going to see them in heaven? I'd say yes. If that's the 
what it costs to be a Christian today, to leave your home and your family, your friends, your job security, everything to follow the God of the Israelites, our churches wouldn't be very full. Yes, they're going to be in heaven. Here we are in the second book of the Bible, and we've already got Gentiles flooding into the kingdom. Why? Because the Great Commission began in Genesis chapter 12. And it's promised to Abraham, through you all peoples on earth shall be blessed. And from Genesis 12 on, God has been reaching Gentile after Gentile after Gentile because A equals B. So what's the bottom line to the ten plagues? Simple. God is doing major things in the world to bring people and peoples to himself. The bottom line lesson. What's bottom line application? Simple. Pray through the news. Pray through the news. You know, I had no idea that God had subcontracted with Fox, CNN, NBC, ABC, and all the other affiliates to broadcast his prayer requests out to the bride of Christ. But that's exactly what he is doing. God is letting us know on a global scale what he's doing. He wants us praying when things hit the news. Why? That's where he's working. I'm sorry, I, I watched the news because I wanted to stay informed. I was missing so much. Why? Because I was brought up in a yearbook theology. I miss so much. Solomon. Solomon and his riches. What's the lesson we learn in Sunday school about Solomon and his riches? Well, walk with God, trust God, obey God, and He'll bless you. Be humble. Don't seek for the riches, but God will in turn give them to you as you seek His face. It's true, it's real, it's top line, upper level. It's not incorrect, but it is incomplete. What's the bottom line to Solomon and his riches? I had no idea. Sure enough, there it was. 1 Kings chapter 10, verses 23 and 24, we read these words. King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom than all the other kings of the earth. The whole world sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom God had put into his heart. The whole world sought audience with Solomon. Yes, what was happening? Solomon was holding international wisdom seminars. He had king after king, queen after queen come to his place and say, hey, we want to know this wisdom that you've got. He probably used the book of Proverbs because that's where wisdom is found and it's very generic. You don't find anything. You don't find the, the, about the God of Israel. It's a very generic, like a set of notes given out to kings and queens from other nations. And he said, you want to know wisdom? Begin to fear God. Solomon, with his international wisdom seminars, was reaching out to Gentile king after Gentile king after Gentile queen after Gentile queen after Gentile queen. What is the bottom line lesson that we learn from this? Simple. God's blessing to us attracts other people and peoples. Bottom line application. God has blessed North America, and I'll best bet God has blessed your country. God has blessed our countries with the greatest insights and technologies so that internationals from all over the world have come to our backyards to study, and God is saying, Arise, O American church, here is your bottom line opportunity to reach out to the internationals I brought to your backyard. Now, if you haven't heard this before, I'll say it again, and I'll make it very clear. At some point in your life, it is God's will for you to be reaching to the internationals He's brought right to your backyard. Why? That's why He's blessed you. He's blessed us to be a blessing. As He blesses us as a nation, other nations are attracted. God says, here is your bottom line opportunity. Reach out to the nations I've brought to your backyard. Men and women, you name story after story after story in this book, the Bible. And I'll bet you everybody here knows the top line lesson. Those of you who are studying it on your television, your computer screen, or those of you who are watching it maybe in a Sunday school class, 
And I'll bet you many of you will struggle with the bottom line. Why? Because you maybe just like me have only been taught half of your Bible. You may have a whole nother half of your Bible to discover. You might have the bottom line and page after page that's been there the whole time. You've just never seen it. And you could discover your Bible in a whole new way. 